alive to tell the story. Let, let, let that just sink in for a minute. Let, let that sink in for a minute. You are alive to tell the story. Alive to tell the story. Anybody telling the story, though? Hallelujah. You alive to tell the story. Somebody didn't get up out the bed this morning, but you are alive to tell the story. Hallelujah. Glory be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know something, saints of God? You are blessed. Did y'all hear me? You are blessed. I'll say it again. You are blessed. Every single morning, mercies are made new just for you. Everything you have need of has already been supplied for that day. A table's been prepared before you, even in the presence of your enemies. Oh, Proverbs 8.34 says this. You don't have this scripture, Brother Devante. It says, blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Did anybody copy what I just said? Did you copy what I just said? See, I can't assume you did. I got to know you did. Was I able to communicate those things to you just now? Communication. Communication. Communication is the act or process of communicating a fact of being communicated. Fact means that it was established. Communicated. To impart knowledge, to impart knowledge of, to make known to, and to give to another. And communicating, to give or interchange thoughts, feelings, information, or the like by writing or speaking. These definitions define what it means to communicate. There's something that we all have probably missed the mark on, and that would come in the form of communicating. So many times we take the route of assuming a thing. We take the route of assuming the thing without really knowing as a fact that what we assume was communicated effectively. We've not come this far in life without having to communicate with someone at some point in time. It's impossible to go through life unless you communicate. C communication is not complete. Hear what I'm saying now. Communication is not complete until it's known to be heard. It's not complete until it's known to be heard. I would really love to believe that every message God has given me for his church has been communicated in a way that everybody has heard it. But that can't be the case because of the areas that have been addressed concerning our lives and how God desires us to live. Many are still struggling to overcome and conquer those areas. If we did not eat, do you think you would keep on living? <laughs> no, we, we got to eat in order to live, don't we? We got to eat in order to live, don't we? This is so understandable in the natural but where does it stand with us in the spiritual? Let's look at a scripture, Job 23 and 12, New King James Version. Something that Job said here. Jo Job said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I've treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. See, there's some things being communicated to he here to us by Job that when we allow the knowledge of, remember what communication means, the knowledge of when we make known to or we, when we give to another. First thing is how he said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. He is saying he never turned away from what God had to say about his life. 
He considered every word just as necessary to receive as he receives food to sustain his life. We come here to hear a word from the Lord, don't we? Job said he, every word was more necessary to receive from God than the very food that he needs to receive to sustain his life. That means the word of God is life-sustaining. The word of God is what's going to sustain our lives. E even though we've been created to, with our own will to choose. See, there can be no picking and choosing as to what the word of God has to say concerning our lives. How we're to live how we're to get along with others, and how we're to conduct our life. God is attempting here to communicate with us, his people, his will for our lives. And he does that by choosing a pastor or ministers to bring forth that word to you. But if we're not communicating that word in a way that you're receiving that word, then communication is not complete. That means the word of God is not complete coming to you. So what we want to do, we want to examine that a little bit today to make sure that you got a copy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is attempting to communicate with us as people, and he wants to communicate his will for our lives. He's doing it each and every time we as ministers stand before you and, and bring those communications from him through our preaching and our teaching. So we're not just up here to be up here. We're here on a mission from God, a mission that brings food to sustain your life. But if you're not getting the communication, then you're dying. Then you're dying, and that's not what we want. And, 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 and proof's in the pudding when you still see struggles, when you still see people that are not able to overcome, when you still, pe still see people that are not able to conquer things. Proof is in the pudding right there. Something's not being communicated right. Or it may be communicated right, but it's not being received on the other end. That's why I say, do you have a copy? Do you have a copy? <laughs> Pastor Johnson know what I'm talking about with that, do you have a copy? She was a dispatcher. <laughs> What we got to do, we, we got to access the level of our communication as pastors and ministers. That's what, that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing today. I'm accessing the, the level of our communication to see if there are areas we need to fine tune in order to connect with you as the body of Christ. Because we got to be connected. See, there's a work to be done. There's a work to be done. And when I say there's a work to be done, who do you think is supposed to do that work? Y'all think God's going to do it? No, we're, we, that's it. The key word is we are. Not pastor by himself, but we are. Do y'all know we have, what, is it 36? 36 outreach ministries that we minister to every single month. 36 outreach ministries. And don't raise your hand if you're not a part of any of them. Because I know who's a part of them. We got a work to do. And, 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 and what we are here at Master's Touch, God has called us as an outreach ministry, which means we, 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 we are an outreach ministry. That's why you're here. That's why God sent you here. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God ordered your steps in this place because there's a work that's got to be done here, and we need everybody involved. We need you. The Lord hath need of thee. But if that's not being communicated correctly, you will think that's the pastor's responsibility. Let's continue. We're talking about communicating today. I want to make sure we got a copy at Master's Touch, amen? That we got a copy is what's being said. When you sit down to a meal at home, I'm always talking about eating and I know we're getting hungry. <laughs> when you sit down to a meal at home, or you go out to a restaurant to eat. You know, the meal has been prepared, right? They prepared the meal for you. But you may sit down and you might add some salt or you might add some pepper to it. You may throw some hot sauce on it or some ketchup on it. Or as you order the meal, it may come with certain items that come with the meal, but you say, uh, can you hold the pickles or keep the onions off? 
Do you realize what happens when we do this? What we're saying is that this meal that you prepared is not to my exact liking. Oh, come on now. I need to make it suitable for me. Come on now. So what we'll do, we attempt to add to or take away things to conform it to our liking. Woo! Let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to us the church. That seems to be okay with us, but because I, I've never really seen anybody get offended when we do these things at a restaurant and they see you putting some salt on it. I, I don't see nobody getting offended by it. But see, that's not the attitude we can take when it comes to the meal God has prepared for us in his word. Amen? See, we can't have that same attitude when it comes to the meal God's prepared for us. Deuteronomy 12.32 says this, Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. Remember we read in Job where he said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. See, that was out of obedience to what God said. God says here in Deuteronomy, whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. Whatever it says, whatever it says is what God intended for it to be. Okay? The words that sustain in our lives, the words that's more necessary than our daily food, what that word says is intended to be what God said it would be. There's no taking from it. There's no adding to it. What God said God meant, and that's what we are to abide by. That's what we are to apply in our lives. That's what we are to be obedient to. We can't take God's word and salt and pepper it up to our liking. We can't take God's word and kick the pickles or the onions off to our liking. We got to take God's word as his word face value, what God says he means, and that's how we should operate in our lives. This is where we're missing it so many times because we're doing a little salt and pepper in here. <laughs> and now, now it fits to how I want it to fit. This feels a little better than what God had over here. I know God said this, but if I, yeah, he'd be all right with this. After all, his mercies are new every day. His grace is sufficient for me. He's a forgiving God. So I will doctor up some things from my liking, and that's not what God told me. So here we go into continuing to struggle, to not overcome, to not conquer, because we're not abiding. He says, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. How many times have we said Man, I, God, hurry up. You're going to ever answer? God's already answered it. God's already supplied it. Like I said earlier, every single day you wake up, the table's already been prepared for you. Every single day you get up, God's already got your needs met. He's already got them met. What we got to do is understand the communication he's getting to us. We got to understand when he says, go over here. We got to understand when he says, don't go over there. We got to understand, say, yes, you can take this. No, don't take that. We got to understand what he's saying. We got to get a copy of what God said. Because if we don't, we're operating in our own strength. And we'll continue. Y'all know I love to talk about enjoying life. We won't enjoy life. We won't enjoy life. People, we need to enjoy life. Man, I, I don't want to leave this earth without I say, man, Master's Touch was a church that enjoyed life. Them folk enjoy some life over there now. But see, the communication has got to be there so you'll understand what God says is what God means, and that's how we are to abide. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So when God tells us something, and uh, well, no, no, don't go to way apart. Stay true to what God has said. Let God be true in every man a liar. Job said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. That was out of his obedience to what God has said. God says here in Deuteronomy, whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. And what was he saying? 
when I command you to do something, do it. Yes. Do it. Whatever it says is what God intended for it to be. So there's no adding to it. There's no taking away from it. Amen? So it's vitally important to me as a pastor to, to make absolutely sure Pastor Johnson, Minister Nisha, Deacon Carter, Vanders, all those ministers, to make absolutely sure that what I communicate to you is exactly to the letter what God has already said about you. What God has said about whatever you may be going through, whatever you may de be dealing with, and making sure it is known to be heard. See, communication is not complete until it's known to be heard. See, we can't keep assuming that you heard it. We got to know that you heard it. Communication is not complete until it's known to be heard. Have you ever encountered somebody who was deaf, re really deaf, couldn't hear? Sometimes when a deaf person is encountered, someone may speak to them and it may even seem as if that deaf person is ignoring the person. But the truth is they never heard what was spoken. See, it could, it could be like, well, why are you ignoring me? But they never really heard. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking sometimes that, that when after 14 years of, of, of preaching the word of God and, and still seeing struggles in, in some of God's people's lives, I'm wondering, uh, did you not hear me? And that's a possibility. That is a great possibility. So that's why we're going to fine-tune our communication so we know what we say is heard. Amen? All this time, I've assumed, I've assumed that everyone heard and some were just merely ignoring what God said. <laughs> See, see, and then I, I get an attitude then. <laughs> look, 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 look. Did they hear what I just preached? <laughs> and so I'm assuming, see, I've assumed something. I didn't have a fact on it. I assumed something, and you may not have even heard it at all. After all, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it stands to reason that the person or persons that are not exhibiting much faith in their situation is that they really haven't heard. Okay? You know, some people can be speaking and you can block your ears and you don't hear them. So there could have been something during a service that, that you just decided to block your ears with and you really didn't hear it. See what I'm saying? When we come to the house of God, we're supposed to come with having an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Who is the church? It's us. So we come with an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, but there can be others, listen, there can be others trying to communicate with you as well. And even though you are hearing, you're not hearing what the Spirit is saying. You're hearing, I know everybody in this room hear my voice. You're hearing, but you're not hearing what the Spirit is saying. Missing what he's saying, and then we're leaving, we're leaving the sanctuary, we're leaving the church, contending with the same old questions, the same old problems each day. Revelation 2.29 says this, He who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Somewhere communications are breaking down. Okay? Somewhere communications are breaking down. Okay, why do you say that, preacher? If we're hearing what the Spirit says to the church, then why are we constantly, why are we constantly talking about coming to church? If we're hearing... Mm -hmm. If we're here, we, the, the, the Spirit tells us, forsake not the assembling of yourself. Y'all, I got to say it. So, so are we hearing what the Spirit is saying? That's not the preacher saying that. That's God saying that. That's just what we always come to church. That, 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 what, pastor? See, whether you come to church or not, ain't got nothing to do with me going to heaven. That's what God is telling you to do. God says that. 
God says that, amen? Why there, well, what, okay, why is there still that fight with giving? We got some still fighting with giving. Some ain't even give a dime all year. All year. Ain't get one dime. So why are we still fighting with that kind of stuff? Why husband and wife still at all with each other? Why? Why is that? Why children still being disrespectful to their parents? As well as the house of God. As well as the house of God. Why? Because somebody heard it here. It was communicated, but it wasn't heard. So that's why we as ministers got to make sure we are being heard. So the communication is complete. Amen. I would say communications are broken down somewhere. Would you say that? If those things are still in effect, that means communication is broken down somewhere. Because God's word doesn't return void. God's word doesn't return void. When God's word is spoken out, it will accomplish what he pleased it to do. What he sent it and established it to do, that's what it's going to do. But you got to hear it. Yeah. See, because God don't lie. He says his word don't return to him void. But if I'm still seeing some of those things, that means somebody's not listening. Somebody's not hearing. And I'm not just talking about this church, those walk, watching my live stream in your church or wherever you may be. You're probably not listening if things are still going haywire in your life. If you're still struggling, if you're still contending with one another, you still got a problem giving, if you still got a problem coming to church, somebody's not listening. Somebody's not listening to what the Spirit has to say to the church. I said the Spirit has to say to the church. So stop getting mad at the pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Stop getting mad at me. I'm a, I'm a mouthpiece for God. I'm telling you what thus saith the Lord. What thus saith the Lord. So quit getting mad at me, man. I got to keep saying what God keep telling me to say it. <laughs> Until we get it. Because he says, I've given you richly all things to enjoy. Until we get there, he's going to keep having me say it. He's going to keep having me address it. You're still fussing and fighting with one another. Still going through all these problems in your life. The word is rich. The word is quick. The word is powerful. The word is sharp. It'll cut right through that mess if we hear it. It'll get you where you need to be. Richly enjoying your life. Richly enjoying your life. Amen. Oh, let me go. Let me go. Oh, I'm having a good time with this today. Hallelujah. The word communication, I said, means the imparting or interchanging of thoughts, opinions, or information by speech or writing. Something imparted, something interchanged, or something transmitted. Over the airwaves, you have a walkie-talkie system where you press the button and you attempt to transmit a thought or an opinion or some information to another party. You, you normally start the transmission by saying, so-and-so, do you have a copy? Deacon, do you have a copy? Deacon, do you have a copy? And the party will respond on the other end and say, I have a copy, go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's a big 10-4, buddy, go ahead. <laughs> that means they acknowledged your point of communication. Your communication was received because they said, yes, I hear what you just said, okay? And the party will respond, go ahead. And have a, in other words, the first step to communication is making sure that the person or persons you are attempting to communicate with have your attention. In my case, the congregation. I have to make sure I have your attention. So many relationships, be it marriage with a friend, are literally destroyed all because of a lack of communication. Someone didn't take the time to see if what they were transmitting had been received on the other end. Okay? Someone didn't take the time to assure that that first step was achieved. Do you have a copy, first of all? I can't tell you how many times 
especially when it comes to marriages, that we fail at this. The husband, maybe he caught him watching his sports on TV or, and wife trying to talk to him, not realizing that she never, ever got his attention mm -hmm. because he was into the game. She just going at it, boy. Boy, all in that game, he in that game. And then later on, remember I told you, you ain't told me that. She never got his attention. Never got it because he was into that game. Or the husband trying to talk to his wife about something, but she tied it with the children. She's doing some chore and never realized he never got her attention. She never received the copy. He never received the copy. So your communication was not complete because it was not known to be heard. You might assume they heard it. And see, that's what God was dealing with me about this. I might assume everybody heard but you can't assume anything. You got to know. Yeah. You got to know. The results, when we don't get that attention or that communication that's received, somebody's going to get mad. It's going to be an argument. Somebody's going to be offended because we thought, we thought we relayed something to the other party that they should have remembered, but we never got a copy on the other end. So we all upset and mad, and the person don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Got a clue. And they were, why are you mad at me? You never said that to me, but I did. See, we didn't get a copy. He didn't get a copy. And that's why I can't get up here and be mad at folk when I was, mm -hmm. still going through that, huh? <laughs> and I do that sometimes. I'm telling you. I'm going to be honest with you. You still do it? You still going through that? Hey, you, all this preaching, you still going through that? But see, I didn't receive a copy. <laughs> they might not even heard what I had to say. Praise the Lord or what the Lord had to say through me, glory to God. <laughs> anyway, you got to love little children because they, they go echo everything they hear. <laughs> they do this, though, because they're trying to establish a line of communication. And the majority of the time, what they communicate is what they heard you say. So you can even say those kids are a check and balance for us. Because if you don't like what you're hearing, then you know you need to work on your communication. <laughs> What's the kids? Where will you get that from, you? <laughs> Where you get that from you? I heard you say that. <laughs> then we want to beat them down. <laughs> Can't do it. Communication. Communication. Maybe, maybe a conversation of our thinking has to occur like the children. Okay. We, we want to get what God has for us. Amen. But did we really hear what he communicated to us? Did God really get our attention when it comes to that thing that you may be dealing with. Because God's got, he said, I'll supply you every need. If he said that, that means he has a means of taking care of everything you got need of. He already has the means for that. And that's what he wants to communicate to us, that I will supply you every need. So we can't get in those situations where it don't look like he's going to supply, but he said he would. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall mount up. So you're going to overcome this thing. See, God's already established it. And like I said, his word does not return void. It will accomplish what he sent it to do. But we have to have a copy. Amen. We have to have a copy of that. We, we sing this song sometimes, speak Lord and my heart will obey. Some of you remember the song. It says, the words that you speak into my heart today, my heart is open wide, and I know that when you speak, you will provide for my every need. I know you'll meet my every need. That's exactly what God has been trying to communicate with us. I got you is what God is saying. I got you. I'm telling you, your situation, your issue, your problem, whatever it is, is not bigger than he is. He's got it, 
and he's got an answer for it. He did, he's not just acknowledging, oh, yeah, I, I see you going through, okay. No, he ain't just letting you go through. He wants to do something about it. So communication with just word comes to you, he'll tell you exactly how to get out of what you in. He'll tell you exactly how to overcome what you need to overcome. He'll tell you exactly how to conquer what you need to conquer. But do you have a copy? Do you have a copy? Because God is speaking. God's not silent. God is speaking. And he's speaking to us. And he says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us, the church. God is still speaking and talking to you and I. We got to listen. We got to listen. We got to listen, people, so we can enjoy life. So we can enjoy. I tell you, I want this church to be the model for people enjoying their lives. Because we know God is true. We know God is able. We know he can. But are we hearing that he can? Are we hearing that? If we trust in God, trust in God. Proverbs 8 told us this, blessed is the man that heareth me. Not just blessed, blessed is the man that heareth me, says the Lord. Ephesians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply. See, I'm making that personal because he is my God, but is he yours? Is he yours? So I'm letting you know I'm going to testify. I'm going to testify. See, my God, <laughs> my, my, my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It says all your need. It says all your need. It says all your need. Do you need to get your act together? <laughs> He'll supply that. All your need. I need to straighten up and fly right. Okay, God's got something for that. All your need. He'll supply every one of them. A need is a lack of something wanted or deemed necessary. That's what a need is. Isn't that interesting because Job said, he esteemed God's commands more necessary than his daily food. Need means a necessity arising from the circumstance or the situation. This is the dictionary definition of it. But I'm pretty sure that there are any other types of definitions, God would have clarified it in his word over the dictionary. But seeing that the definition has been allowed to represent what a need is, then we should be able to look at it to determine needs in our lives. That makes sense. That's what my need is. This is what a need is. This is what a need is. God says he'll supply. This is what a need is. This is what my need is. God says he'll supply. it. And to trust that, blessed is the man that heareth me. My God shall supply all your need. Is there a need for more faith? Hmm? Maybe a need for more faith. Maybe, maybe, maybe you want your faith increased. Because we can't seem to believe what God is saying wholeheartedly. So that means I need an increase in faith so I can believe God wholeheartedly, what he says and what he means, and that's what I'm going to do. So, God, I need more faith. I need my faith increased. That's a need. Certain need for healing. Anybody need healing? I'm not just talking about in here. Maybe you need healing. Is that a need? You see, healing is a need. God's will is that we prosper, be in health, even as our souls prosper. So in other words, God's will is not that we suffer and have afflictions and all these things in our body. That's not God's will for our life. That's a need when we need healing. My God shall supply what? All. All. So don't think God won't heal you. But the doctor said, yeah, so what? What did God say? Remember what we said earlier, what God says is what he means. And he says, with my stripes, you're healed. So it's a need. Is there a need for protection? It's a need. Is there a need for deliverance? Maybe we need to be delivered from something. 
What about restoration? Maybe we went through some hard times and some things got torn up and we need to be restored. Is that a need in your life? If it is, guess what? Got to supply it. Got to supply it. Got to supply it. Do you have a copy? Did you ever hear that? Were you able to hear that? God will supply my every need. God will supply. You mean I didn't have to go through this this long? I didn't have to do without this for this long? My God will supply. You got to have a copy. My God will supply my every need, and that's what he'll do. That's exactly what he'll do. Let's communicate with God. Let's communicate with God. Is there a financial strain? I hear that a lot for going through some financial stuff. Is that a need? Is there a relationship that may be going sour? Are there some wayward kids still out there? Come on. Then let's communicate with God. Let's communicate with God. And when we do, let's make sure that he has our attention when we speak and make sure you affirm to God that he has yours. By saying, go ahead, God, I, I got a copy. See, because when we pray, this is what we do when we pray. We go to God and we pray and we get up and we go on about our business. One-way communication. Yep. We go into God and we're laying everything like he said at his altar. You know, we're casting our cares on him, but we never sit back and wait for him to affirm that he got what we say. Yes. Yes. And how does he affirm that he got it? By speaking back to you. Yes. Deacon, do you have a copy? Go ahead, I got a copy. Yes. I confirmed. I confirmed. So God wants to confirm that, 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 that you're talking back to him. So he'll give you a word. Because what he's promised, he's able to do. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 2. Second part of that says, yet you have not because you ask not. <laughs> wow, well, that's simple enough, isn't it? Yet you have not because you ask not. And that's pretty much how we can sum it up. I'll ask God for something because he said I don't have because I won't ask. So I need to ask God for something I don't have. I need to ask. Yes, he sees your need. He sees your need. But he wants you to ask him. So like I said earlier, see there, there's a work to be done. We, we need to work. God's work was finished on the cross. <laughs> we need to work. So we need to ask God. Ask of me. He said, I'll give you the heathen as your inheritance. Oh, my Lord. There's more to it than that. How are we asking God? How is it are we coming to God? What's the motive behind our asking? Is it truly out of need or is it for prestige? See, James was responding to the many bickerings and complaints of the church when he said this. And he wanted them to draw closer to God. In order for them to do that, James had to communicate it to them in a way that caused them to see how they were not drawing closer to God, but closer to their own desires and lusts. Let's take a look at that, James 4 and 1, New Living Translation. So this is how James came up. You have not because you ask not. Because he wanted to show them how they were not drawing closer to God. He says, what's causing the quarrels and the fights among you? <laughs> don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have so you can scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it so you're fighting wage war to take it away from them. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask him, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Whoa. That, 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 that's so deep. That almost knocked me over. <laughs> so what is being communicated here is that there's a way to come to God and to ask God so that you get what you need. 
The key is the right motive. The key to coming to God is having the right motive. God, I need you to get this person out of my life. <laughs> you don't care what happens. You don't care what happens. Just get them out of here. Get them out of my life. <laughs> That's really not a need in your life. You got the wrong motives on that one. See? You got the wrong motive. You think it's a need. You need this person out by life. You think that's a need, but that's that that that's that's not a need. See, that's not a need. We 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 got to occupy till it comes. Love ye one another, even your enemies. The Bible said. So that's not talking about destroying them. <laughs> your motives is not right. So that's why that person's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, the key is the right motive though, amen. So, so so why do I want my finances to increase? Why? Well, we start talking about some financial increase. Woo! Yes. <laughs> People could be just so boy, you said finance. That's mine. <laughs> but why do we want our finances to increase? Is it so it can be a blessing? To the kingdom of God, or so I can buy a few more things. Yeah. Why? Why do I want a new house? Yeah. Why do nothing wrong with wanting a new house? Is it because my family has increased and we we need more room? Or I would like to be more hospitable and my place for fellowship? Or am I just trying to keep up with the Joneses? Go, they got a big house. I'm gonna get one. Motives, motives, motives. James said, even when we ask, we don't get it because motives are all wrong. Get the right motives and watch how increase overtakes you. Get the right motive. You ever heard you can't outgive God? Get the right motive and you'll see. You'll see. You should be first partakers of the fruit. Yes, you should. But you should want to express the goodness of God through a reflection of a new dress or a new suit. That's fine. No, no, no problem. What could the Lord bless me with? That's great. There ain't no problem with that. Amen. Put some new furniture in your house. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's good. That's good. But make sure those things are not the only motivation behind you want more. Amen. Make sure that all we achieve, God's glorified and through it. If I get a brand new house full of furniture, then I should have a testimony of what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. Amen? Give God the glory. Because how did I get it? Not yeah. by power nor by might. Yeah. So how did I get it? Amen? Yeah. God's will of communication is such that when we receive it, when we receive it, when we receive it with our full attention, that there will never be anything lacking or broken. Now, I hope I didn't lose everybody right then. Because there can be a place like that. There is a place like that. There is a place like that. I'm there. I don't like for nothing. Nothing. I don't like for nothing. And I must tell you something, that it's not about how much money you got in the bank. It's about where your trust is. Where your trust is. I could probably say I'm a thousandaire, but I don't go much farther than that. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't like millions just laid in a bank account because I don't like, no, I don't like for anything because of where my trust is. Because every time I have a need, God supplies it. And I know that without a shadow of a doubt. So I don't fret, I don't worry about nothing. God supplies my every need. So I don't like for nothing. God will communicate every detail for your success. That's why we got to listen. That's why it says, blessed is the man that hears me. See, because he's going to give you every detail about your success. He's going to show you just how to figure it out. He's going to show you just how to make the problem go away. God's going to show you. He'll give you every detail for your success. And our communication to God must be that we're never afraid to hear God say, no. Man, we don't like that word, do we? We don't like that word, no. The word no has never killed one person. <laughs> Ain't never killed a person. It's a word that so many, though, will not deal with. And part of the reasoning behind that is that 
No has always represented a form of rejection when we receive it. Excuse me. And what is not the case when it comes to God, because God communicates as such that he will supply. Let's wind up. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Who giveth us richly. Yeah, that's where I was trying to get back to. And I want us to enjoy life, y'all. I want you to enjoy life. I don't want you to have your vehicle break down in Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> and not have a way to get it home. And not have a way to get yourself home. See, that's lacking no good thing. That happened to me just the other day. Let me tell the testimony. I'm going to give a quick testimony. The Lord had told me that I needed to drive Lorraine's car to Detroit on Wednesday. And I said, we need to drive your car to Detroit. But we woke up Wednesday morning and her car's tire was flat. Okay. I said, all right, well, we'll go ahead and drive the truck. Now, going to Detroit, we drive 70 miles an hour the whole way. Wide open, I have it on cruise, just getting it. Got to Detroit, pulled in the parking lot, getting ready to go do a work order. I heard this. Look underneath my truck, the entire crossbar for the frame had rusted through. Gas tank hanging down. Now, I, I made it to Detroit, y'all. I'm, I'm going 70 miles an hour down expressway yeah. with all that could have happened then. Yeah. But I got there. Last year, I decided, let me um, put my triple A to where I got unlimited mileage for towing. All I did was call triple A, came in, hooked it up, took it right to 1314 Westwood Drive. Ain't cost me another dime. Yeah. But on top of that, I had the money to go down to the Enterprise rent a car, rent a car, get me and my wife home safely, lacking nothing because God supplied everything for me. Now, how many times in my past, I think, before I started trusting God, would I have been trying to scrape and scrounge and get somebody to do this and come pull that and, and give me some money for that? God, but God, but God. But God. And I want you guys to see something. I'm saying this for a reason is that he's no respecter of person. See, I got a copy of what God said mm -hmm. concerning my life. Yeah. I got a copy of trust in the Lord with all your heart yeah. to lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge me. Now, I got a copy of that. I, I heard God say that. To yeah. me. I heard God say that, that he would be a very present help in my time of trouble. Yeah. So anytime trouble comes and trouble comes, I'm not trouble free. Yeah. Trouble comes, but I know God is there with me through it all. And he says, I overcome by the blood of the lamb which Jesus already shed for me and the word of my testimony. What am I testifying? That God will supply my every need. Yeah. What am I testifying? That God will do it. That God will do it. That God will do it. But see, the devil will make you afraid to even say that. Because he's always saying, what if he don't? Yes. He's always telling you that. What if he don't? There's no way he's not going to. Because he's not a liar. There's no way he's not going to. Do you receive that? Do you have a copy of that today? Then you will know, you will know. You will know the next time something comes up against you that God has got you. Why so downcast, oh, my soul? Put your hope in God. All the stuff we go through, all these downtime we have, all this and all that. Uh, let, me, let me go. I got to finish up. I, I got a little, few more minutes here. Go. <laughs> okay. Psalms 84 and 11 says, For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11. We all know this one. We say it pretty much every service now. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, the thoughts of peace, yes. not of evil, to give you an expected end. So God's already got the end planned out for you. Does this sound like a God that rejects us? No. Does this sound like a God that would give up on us? No. It sounds to me like a God that not only wants to, but will supply all our needs. 
Has this message today communicated anything to you? Has it communicated? I'm not assuming it has. I'm saying has it. And by your affirmation, that lets me know you've heard it. So can I get an affirmation? Has everybody heard what was said in this place today? Amen. Amen. Then you've received it. You've received it, and now you can have it. You've received it, and now you can have it. Hallelujah. The message is that you don't miss out because you didn't hear. That you believe that you receive, and guess what? You shall have. He says you can, but that can, listen now, he says you can, but that can comes through Christ. Okay? You can do, you can do all things through Christ. So don't walk out of here thinking you got some mighty power in yourself that you go out there and do some stuff. No, no, no. You can do all things through Christ. And that's why it's so important that we know him and the power of his resurrection. That Jesus is Lord of our lives. Because if he's not Lord of your life, then nothing I said today is even going to apply to you. Because it's not by power or by might. So that's telling me we can't do it in our own. But he can. He can. And then we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us, he says. Amen. You can get those questions answered, get those issues resolved. Communication is the key. So how has your communication been with him? How has your communication been with him? His words say that he's always mindful of you. He's always mindful of you, which means each and every time we talk to him, we have his undivided attention. Wow. But what about on our end? We've got his undivided attention, yeah. but what about on our end? There are other things that are trying to communicate with you. I want you to know that. There's other things that are trying to communicate. Voice is always vying for your attention. Yeah. Other things. And if they can get your attention before God gets your attention, then you'll be hearing what they have to say instead of what God has to say. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Closing right here, I heard a preacher make such a profound statement. I had to write this one down. It was good. He said, the reason so many people don't follow Jesus is because the world offers them so many other options. When Jesus, there is no other option. See, the world's giving you so many other options, but when Jesus... There's no other option. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. There's no other option. He said, take up your cross and follow me. And his sheep will do just that. They will follow him. Last scripture right here, Psalm 16 and 11, says, thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Who's seated at the right hand of God the Father? Jesus. Jesus is your pleasure. Take pleasure in knowing Jesus. That's the one you can do all things through. Let that be communicated to you today. Jesus is your pleasure. He said at thy right hand, talking about God, at your right hand, is pleasures forevermore. Do your copy today. Do your copy today. I had Devontae do me a nice little cover this time with that walkie-talkie. I knew Pastor Joss would get it because she was a dispatcher. But we got to get an affirmation from our end to God that we heard what he said. That you heard what he said. Let's take just a few moments if you would bow your heads with me. Thank you for being so attentive today. If there's anybody in the room today that would like for me or the prayer team to get in agreement with you and pray concerning some things that you may be struggling with or going through, I want you to come to the altar. Anybody like that in here today? That you've got some things that 
Well, maybe this message helped you right then and there, and you overcame right through this message. Praise the Lord. But if not, then I'm going to have you come to the altar so we can pray with you and stand in agreement. The Bible says two are better than one. But the Bible says two are better than one. Are better than one. Amen. The Bible says if any two touch and agree as to touching anything on this earth, that we can have it. So we can get in agreement with you, and we can have just what you are in need of today. Amen. So I see no takers for that. My next invitation is this, though. If you don't know Jesus, now I'm looking around the room, and I'm, I'm see, like I said earlier, I'm done away with assuming stuff. <laughs> we, 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 ministers, we're done away with that. We're not assuming everybody. See, because there's this thing called backsliding. That means we can walk away from Jesus. We can backslide from him. So if anyone in this room, it may be you, you walked away from Jesus and, and, and you're not serving him like you know you should, and you want to rededicate yourself to that today, I would like to pray with you. Could I see your hand? Anybody in the room? Anybody? Anybody? No hands going up? Does everybody in the room know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, has accepted him as their Lord and Savior, have confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? If you haven't done that, you're not saved. You're not saved. So if anybody hasn't done that, I want to pray with you. Anybody in the room today? Praise the Lord. We got unanimously saved folk in this house today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Father, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that according to your word, it does not return void. It accomplishes what you purpose it to do. And the word purposes us to live a good life, Father God. To richly enjoy life, Father God. To not go through life, Lord God, with sufferings and pains and hurts and all those things that would cause you not to enjoy. So, Father, I thank you today that your word has illuminated and elevated us to another level in you today, Father. Father God, our line of communication to you now is open like never before. We have not because we ask not, God, so we will ask you, Lord, but we will take the time, God. We will take the time, God, to hear from you. We want a copy as well. So thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done in this place today, Lord God. We leave this place not your presence. Once again, you've been mindful of us. And now we'll be mindful of you. And all we endeavor to do the remainder of this day, we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. I hope to see some of you here at Bible study. We've only got two more sessions, and then we're going into our winter service. But we won't be having Bible study on Thursday night. So you might want to try to catch the last two for the year. Amen? So Thursday night. At